You'd been swimming from 11.30 at night. Did sunrise bring you hope? <sighs> it did, followed by, followed by probably the worst bit of the night for me when I, after this boat sunk. Um, because once the light did come up, I, I saw that I'd missed the headland which I had been swimming at all night. And now there was, it was a big bay which I couldn't see, even see the land. Reuben McDornan escaped a capsized boat and swum for eight hours in huge seas, covering in the process nearly 15 kilometres. He'd cheated death, but now, cruelly, an outgoing tide starts dragging him back out to sea. It was at this point he stares down into the abyss and feels like giving up. Can I take my leave of you? And I was talking to Sammy and saying that, you know, that I'm, you know, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm just gonna let you down. You know, and I thought, fuck, do I swim or do I just bloody, or do I just, you know, do I give up? You know, is it easier just to, you know, drown yourself or something, you know, but it was just, yeah, it was hard. It was just where, you know, I just felt like I'd failed. But, you know, I just, I just quickly, quickly snapped out of that and went right. Well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down swimming. If I, if I die, um, it's because I, I've died from exhaustion of trying my ass, you know. You must be a pretty special person, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, she's my best mate. That's yeah. for sure. Soulmates. Mm -hmm. But it was more than the love of a good woman that saved Reuben that morning. It was also an incredible stroke of luck. Mal and Linda Priday decided to up anchor on their catamaran on the level and get out of 1770. Getting 35 knots of wind inside the anchorage. And after two nights of that, I said, no, no, hey, we're out of here. We Pancake Creek, 11 miles or so up um, further north, running with the wind with the seas. I think that's a good option, so away we went. They were the only vessel out there that morning. The conditions, the complete opposite to today. I saw the, saw the, <laughs> this uh, sailing boat come out and I just, it was just like, oh, you bastard, you know, just coming out, flashing your flag at me, you know, I was just like, I didn't even think for a second that like, oh yeah, that's a, that's my way out of here or ticket out of here. I just kept, kept swimming. Reuben thought the boat would tack and head east, but it started heading his way. He was faced with a choice, swim toward the boat and lose ground or keep heading for shore. And I just went out for it and it was coming straight at me to a point where I'm like, oh, they've seen me, you know, like they've, they've, they're coming at me like, if they haven't seen me, they're gonna run me over, you know. It got so close to where I could see them. I could see the people on the boat. And when I saw them, I could see that they all their heads were turned away. And it was coming past and they were gonna, they were gonna miss me. And I was just, oh, I was out, I was screaming and whistling because I, I can, I can get attention with a whistle and I was just so angry, screaming like. Until I came upstairs and with my cup of coffee, sat in the cockpit and I heard a voice and I 
And I thought, oh my God, we're gonna hit a boat. Anyway, I looked over the side, around the corner, and then I just saw Reuben whooshing off the stern, and he's going, oh yeah. <laughs> How close was he? Oh, he almost could have touched the boat at that stage. Yeah, within five metres. What are the chances? Incalculable. Absolutely incalculable. Just to be in the right place at the right time, going the right direction at the right speed, to be right there where he was. Fate. His number wasn't up. Yeah, you reckon so? Definitely not. He's got too much living to do, that boy. Had you not spotted him, what do you think his fate would have been? The tide had just turned, which meant he would have been taken out to sea. So he would have had another six hours of going out on an outgoing tide. Um, he's very fit. I, I'd like to think he would have made it, but I doubt it. You saved his life. Yeah, we did. It's a nice feeling. Just wish we could have got the other guys too. That feeling of it's over, you'd survived the unthinkable, and you'd kept your promise to Sammy. Yep, yeah, no, that's the first person I, I rang, actually. As soon as he spoke, I knew something had happened. But he just said, I'm okay. And then I remember saying to him, what about the other boys? And I was screaming at him, what about the boys? Yeah. And he had said, they're gone. Mm. Families of six missing fishermen off the Queensland coast have... More than 12 hours after the Diane capsized, a massive air and sea search finally commences in atrocious conditions. And Reuben is eventually reunited with Sammy and his mother, Marty, at Gladstone Airport. As soon as I saw him, I just, I, that pull, you know, I just ran. I, you know, I just thought I'd sort of walk over, but I just couldn't wait. Just had to grab you and touch you and make sure you were okay. I just said to her, you got me home, you know. <laughs> just thanking her, you know, she was, the reason why I bloody wanted to get home so bloody badly. All the families had gathered at Gladstone, desperate for any news. And Reuben was the only one who could tell them what had happened. How difficult was it walking into that room and seeing your mates' families for the first time? Almost as hard as that night really was being the only one there and having to confront everybody when everyone else's son is missing. I thought I would be like, where's my son? And, but that was not the case at all. They just like, you know, I became their son that day. Reuben walked into that room though and just showing what character he has, he walked in and had to sit in front of all the family members and tell them exactly what had happened and he didn't leave anything out. He wanted everybody to know exactly what had happened. He didn't hold anything back. Mm. Um, yeah, I was so proud of him. Do you think they still held out hope that they'd find their sons, husbands, brothers? We all, yeah, we, we all did. We all did, you know. Coming up, the frantic search for mates. They obviously got out. I'm 100% sure they did. Families in despair. We'd found two of the boys, but we didn't know who they were. That was tough. And the Diane gives back a priceless memento. You're meant to get it back, that's Thank all you. I can say. Oh, yeah. man. It's, it's, it's the one thing he wanted. One thing. That's next on 60 Minutes. 
Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.